Howdy, 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 my name is Anacha Sasuke, and welcome back to Let's Read the SP Foundation Wiki. In the last episode, I'm pretty sure we read Digital Shortwave Entity, A Species of Fish, The Lamp Man, Playground of the Lost, and The Fall of a King. Because I do remember reading Lamp Man, and it follows that I would have read the other things as well. So in this episode, we're going to be reading Perfect Plastic, Liquefied Empath, Virulent Word, Spawn Water, and then we're going to breach the 1100s and end off with Gaia's Blood. So let's check out that there plastic, shall we? It's safe. It doesn't sound safe, but it's as it is. Um, SCP-1096 instances not in use are stored in a secure locker at site blank. Experimentation with it may only be performed on disposable dudes, and only with prior permission from at least two level 3 personnel. Class D sub test subjects are housed in separate test subject containment cells at site blank, and are excluded from mandatory monthly termination for the duration of testing. Description. SCP-1096 is a set of silicone breast implants of various sizes, of which there are currently 15 pairs in containment. Each instance of 1096 is identified by lack of serial numbers and the words of the factory etched onto the outside surface. So before I continue, first off, what was this called? Perfect plastic? Okay, so first off, I was not expecting it to be about breast implants. Secondly, I would never have expected the factory to have sinister breast implants, but they apparently this is both those things. So, within seven days of being implanted into a suitable female test uh, subject, 1096 will slowly begin converting all living tissue within the subject into what appears to be a living silicone-based plastic material. Visible changes begin within with the removal of minor blemishes and imperfections and quickly advances into major figure sculpting transformations, taking approximately 10 months to complete. It is currently unknown how this material retains all of the properties of living tissue, and how major organs are able to continue functioning despite total conversion to silicone. Affected individuals are often described by observers as being perfect and beautiful, though the exact appearance of each affected subject tends to vary according to that subject's personal tastes. Complete conversion of the subject's tissue results in a complete lack of detectable aging in the subject, though the subject also loses the ability to heal naturally. Significant injuries inflicted to these subjects result in lasting wounds that do not close. Subjects have reported significant doling of tactile sensation, including symptoms similar to congenital insensitivity to pain. I feel like I said that wrong. Insensitivity? Feels like I missed a syllable. Conversion of the subject's brain tissue also results in a slight but progressive reduction in intelligence as well as memory impairment. Uh, 1096 was dis first discovered on blank blank 1980 something following reports of a woman admitted to a redacted hospital following a major car accident redacted as being made from plastic and bleeding clear blood. Addendum 1096 incident report blank blank 1990 something. An unused 1096 instance was recovered f following a raid on an underground plastic surgery clinic and redacted and the following damage documentation was recovered from the scene. Thank you for your purchase of this quality factory product. Ever cursed your genetics for not being- for not making you perfect and beautiful? Wish you could be young again? Wipe away everything from minor blemishes to years of wrinkles and look young forever with intelligible. This surgeon, about to perform a procedure on a female subject, was shot and killed during the raid after drawing a firearm on Mobile Task Force redacted members, and was unable to be questioned. The female subject was administered a class A amnestic and released following a thorough investigation and background check that turned up no additional information. Okay, so, the factory made breast implants that turn people into silicone. That is nowhere near as sinister as what they usually make. Unless they were going to take all of the silicone people and melt them down to use them for something else. But, other than the fact that they can no longer heal, that doesn't really seem as bad as any of the other factory things I've seen. And there's, there's been some shit from the factory, as I'm sure y'all know. Now it's time for liquefied empath. Is it a cup of water that feels? I don't know. We're already starting off with weird sinister breast implants. Who knows where it's going to go from here? 1097 is Euclid and is to be kept fully enclosed within a reinforced pressurized stainless steel container at all times. And to be kept at a minimum of 2200 kPa. I don't know what that means. Let's find out. What does that mean? That did not help. Oh, Pascals. Cool. 2200 Pascals. 1097 is to be contained in a Type D concrete bunker. I thought you said pressurized stainless steel. Or is the stainless steel 
in the pressurized or in the concrete. Modified to include retractable seals on air vents capable of withstanding prolonged exposure to liquids with a pH level between 11.3 and 13.5. I offhand don't know if the higher numbers or the lower numbers indicate basic or acidic because I'm not a scientist. In the event of a containment breach, this bunker is to be completely sealed until further notice by the security director. 1097 is to be contained at Site 17. The containment bunker is to be located at least 50 meters away from all other staff workplaces and SCP-designated objects. Samples of it are to be extracted via remote control robotic equipment, and all maintenance of containment equipment is to be performed by approved lab laboratory robotics. No staff or test subjects are allowed to be within 10 meters of 1097 unless permission is granted by the research director. A total volume exceeding 2.5 liters may not be removed from containment at any given time without authorization from the research director. Okay. SCP-1097 is 72.3 liters of a dark brown viscous fluid composed of a mixture of water, sodium hydroxide, and liquefied human remains. In an automated laboratory environment, 1097 exhibits physical characteristics consistent with fluids composed of a similar mixture of materials. Okay. When a human approaches within approximately 5 meters of any portion greater than 2.8 liters, its anomalous properties manifest. 1097 will first alter its shape to mimic the physical form of that person. It achieves this by manipulating its density so as to achieve a semi-solid state. It can also completely solidify portions of itself for a limited duration to a maximum observed hardness of 152 HV30. Whatever that means. During this process, 1097 maintains its dark brown viscous appearance, albeit in a shape an analogous, analogous to the subject. The appearance, in mo appearance of it in motion is similar to that of a ferromagnetic fluid being manipulated by an electromagnetic field. In addition to simulating a subject's physical form, it will also imitate a subject's mental characteristics and behavioral traits to the best of its ability. While 1097's ability to communicate is limited, it will display physical mannerisms, mannerisms and attitudes similar to those previously observed in the subject. Tests using EEG monitors have shown that 1097 will exhibit brain activity in the same, exact same manner as its subject. Current research suggests that 1097 does not possess any true sapience of its own. Any actions or characteristics appearing as independent thought are merely a complex reaction catalyzed, catalyzed by the proximity of a sapient being. When more than one person enters the area of effect, its appearance and reactions become far more unpredictable. In a multiple subject scenario, 1097 has been documented to assume an array of physical aspects, in some cases deviating radically from the humanoid form. 1097 will also demonstrate substantial variance in behavioral patterns. 1097 has been documented on some of these, uh, some of these occasions to be hostile and extremely aggressive. When agitated, it will use its ability to harden itself as well as its innate caustic properties to attack and seriously injure staff. The following is a list of notable experiments involving it. Experiment 2. D4230, a 47-year-old male with a, behavior, a history of good behavior while incarcerated, introduced alone into the area of effect. 1097 assumes a physical form resembling that of 48230, answers questions from researchers cooperatively with a simple yes or no gestures, and displays knowledge of subjects both general and personal that the disposable dude is familiar with. D23142, a 21-year-old female with documented sociopathic behavioral tendencies, introduced alone into 1097's area of effect. In a manner similar to Experiment 2, 1097 exhibits physical traits, mannerisms, and knowledge of disposable dudette. Upon researcher Upton's disengagement of the security doors leading into the testing chamber, they suddenly feign illness. Or, or, 23142 suddenly feigns illness. Feigns sudden illness, eh. When medical staff responded, 1097 attacks nearby security staff, causing a brief containment breach. Containment reestablished with two fatalities and four personnel injured, 23142 summarily terminated. Okay, disposable 2903, a 37-year-old male convicted of multiple murders, and 3157, a 28-year-old uh, serial rapist introduced into the area of effect. It manifested as a one point. 8 meter tall male of average build and musculature. The facial features resemble an amalgamation of both disposable dudes, including such features as 2903's surgically repaired cleft lip and an 8 centimeter scar over 3157's right eyebrow. For the duration of the test, 1097 huddles in a corner of the testing chamber refusing to interact with researchers. 
Okay. This time, D10772, a 27-year-old female, and D58271, a 40-year-old male, both with histories of non-violent crime, is introduced simultaneously into the area of effect. 10772 is fluent in American Sign Language and instructed to attempt to communicate with 1070, or 1097. 1097 arranges its mass to resemble blank blank, an individual that a uh, disposable dude claims was his 10th grade English teacher. 1097, like 10772, demonstrates ASL fluency and is able to communicate with test subjects and researchers. 1097 challenges 10772 to a game of chess. After three hours of compliance with researchers' inquiries, 1097 is granted his request in exchange for his cooperation, and a chess set and board is introduced into the testing chamber by a robotic drone. 1097 defeats 10772 in eight moves. Dang. Okay, test 13. D95523041890992 and 60354 all males between the ages of 19 and 54 and selected for their records of compliance and good behavior introduced simultaneously into the area of effect. 1097 changes the shape into a 3.4 meter tall vaguely humanoid construct exhibiting an additional arm protruding from the spinal region with what appears to be a sim simulacrum of 04189's face in the place of a hand. 1097 quickly moves to embrace 95523 with four of its limbs causing acute chemical burns over most of 95523's body. After approximately two minutes, 95523 loses consciousness. 1097 decreases in height by 1.2 meters and assumes the appearance of a normal human male. 1097 is docile and cooperative for the duration of the experiment. D95523 dies of his injuries three days later. Hmm. I wonder why it chose to just destroy that guy. We'll never know. Next up is the virulent word. If virulent means what I think it means, this is going to be weird. All written instances, it's Euclid by the way, all written instances of 1098 are to be burned, painted over, or otherwise obliterated. A single recorded instance is kept on a standard audio cassette for study. Under no circumstances should this recording be digitized. All instances of one are to be contained in converted Class D barracks. They are to be provided food from the site cafeteria at regular meal times. Under no circumstances may they be given writing implements or recording media. A television and puzzles and games are to be provided for entertainment of the one instances. The barracks must be soundproof to STC 60 plus. Two guards are to be posted at the door of the one barracks. All guards are to wear full ear headphones equipped with active filters designed to scramble human speech. Okay. 1098 is a blank syllable word with a phoneme pattern consistent with origin among modern speakers of American English. It appears to have no effect on non-English speakers. Persons reading or hearing 1098 in context report report that it is euphonious and somewhat humorous. Exposure to 1098 out of context appears to be safe, but this has not been conclusively established. Exposure to 1098 in written or spoken form may lead to infection, with increasing probability for each additional exposure. There is an inverse correlation between the size of an individual's working vocabulary and their susceptibility to infection, but this has not been rigorous, rigorously quantified. Persons in the earliest phases of infection appear to be the most contagious. Infected individuals hereafter known as one will begin to use 1098 preferentially as a placeholder name, similarly to whatchamacallit, thingamajig, or what's-his-name, and respond positively to its use by others. Example usage. Hey, Ray, can you hand me that redacted? No, not that one. The freaking redacted over there. Within two to three weeks of exposure, one will begin substituting 1098 for other parts of speech with increasing frequency. Initially, it is possible to communicate with one by inferring the intended meaning of 1098 from context, but soon the prevalence of 1098 in speech becomes so high that only other instances of one are able to comprehend it. In the final stages of infection, every utterance of one becomes a string of variously inflicted, inst inflicted instances of 1098. These effects also appear in written communication. Instances of one are generally cooperative, but express distress upon discovering that they cannot be understood. When speaking with other instances of one, they appear relieved or even elated. Standardized testing confirms that they have no cognitive impairment other than their muddled speech. Okay, so they just don't want people to not be able to talk anymore. And virulent doesn't seem to mean what I think it thought it meant, but I also don't really need to use that word very often, so let's see what it means. Of a disease or poison, extremely severe, harmful in its effects, bitterly hostile. Okay.
Okay. I had two guesses, and my first guess was wrong. 1099! Here we are! SCP-1099 is Euclid for one, and 1099-1 is held at Biological Research Area 45 in a 25 by 7 by 7 meter fiberglass tank. Excuse me, 24. The floor of the containment and research area is a graphite-coated stainless steel grate supported over a 24 meter radius, 15 meter deep tank of saline solution. I got enough sleep last night, I don't know why I'm yawning like this, I'm sorry. All experimentation must be overseen by at least one level 3 or higher researcher. All personnel, excluding D-Class, entering the containment area require Class B hazmat, hazmat protection. No stray ferrous or magnetic objects, excluding those being used for research, are allowed. After every experimental session, the entire containment slash research area and all personnel to be saturated with saline solution by way of a chamber integrated sprayers. 1099-1 is chemically water, but possesses a magnetic dipole approximately the strength of neo... neodymium? Neodymium? How do I say this? I was hoping I was going to get hand handed the word so that I could click to see how you pronounce it, but it didn't go down like that. Maybe I won't have to say it anymore. This liquid is also an anti-emulsifier, unable to mix with oil or normal water, and remains in a single area by way of self-attraction. Particulate tests have shown that the liquid flows independently aligned with the nearest geomagnetic pole and attracts ferrous objects. Samples of the liquid that are boiled, distilled, or ionized condense into normal water. Similar loss of effect is noted when one is salinated, becoming ordinary salt water. Freezing one effectively creates an ice bar magnet, and or ice bar magnet, and it retains its unique exposure effects when it returns to a liquid state. This remarkably transdermal liquid is absorbed quickly into human skin upon contact. The area soon becomes inflamed and will spasm of its own accord. Necrosis swiftly sets in at the edges of the affected area. Deep and necrotic av avulsion injuries are left behind exposing bone and tendon, severing major arteries and causing blood infection. In most cases, swift application of heavily salinated water halts symptoms. Treated exposure may still cause infection, scarring, and necrosis of the exposed area. As such, at least two medical personnel must be on hand for all experiments. An untreated exposure will slowly work its way free of the host with increasingly coordinated movements, utilizing swift necrosis to peel itself away. The avulsed flesh is itself is an iteration of 1099-2. Once free, the flesh will begin willfully crawling, not unlike an earthworm or maggot, in the direction of the nearest source of fresh water. If left in a sealed chamber, the iteration will crawl in circles and eventually slow as necrosis sets in. Isolated specimens that die of dehydration show no difference from normally decaying human flesh. Iterations exposed to salt or salt water seize and halt movement suddenly as their entire structure is suffused with salt crystal within seconds. Specimens that die of salt exposure show no difference from normal, albeit brined, human flesh and do not reanimate upon rehydration. Water examined after rehydration of brine dead specimens show no abnormal traits. When exposed to fresh water, an iteration will begin swimming with ryth rhythmic movements if submerged, or rolling and thrashing if in shallow water, and will swell by way of water bloating. After taking on approximately 50% of its own mass and bloat, it will begin convulsing and eventually will fissure its own surface. The fissures will first leak enough one to isolate itself from the surrounding water. From each fissure will emerge an iteration of three, which will immediately begin eating the now shed flesh layer. Three are smooth-skinned, water-dwelling scavengers of unknown classification. These water worms have rudimentary mouths used to eat small bits of rotted, rotted meat and flotsam, and will scavenge water bottom silt for nutrition. Specimens dissected show an eel-like sheath, not shaft, internal structure resembling a neuter branch, and no reproductive organs. The worms breathe through their skin, outputting one as waste product. These worms sometimes maintain vestiges of parts from the flesh which they shed, cosmetic protrusions resembling lips, noses, and earlobes. Handling of three without listed precautions results in one exposure. The largest iteration on record is 6 meters long and approximately 8 centimeters in circumference, log 1099-D101. The smallest iteration is approximately 0.5 centimeters long, log D010. Addendum. One was discovered while investigating reports of an acid spring populated by unknown roundworms in the marshlands of Data Expunged. Several dozen iterations of three were recovered. 
Magnetic anomalies in the area, as well as accidental exposure on the part of Researcher Blank, revealed the presence of one. Biological Containment Mobile Task Force Sigma-1, Montezuma, remains in the area in the guise of an environmental protection organization. Experienced members of Task Forces Alpha-2, Beta-7, and Gamma-6, and Theta-5 were selected from Level 3 or higher personnel. Collectively, they lead and train Level 1 personnel in the recovery of 1 and iterations of 3. 78% of the data expunged marshlands have been deemed secured by Task Force Sigma-1. Test Log Okay, test one. D-class personnel exposed to one via hand pump mister to the subject's tests. Subject indicates three when presented with a universal pain scale. Results, light necrotic damage to skin over a course of one hour. Subject sloughs first three layers of epidermis from exposed area. Test ten. They were exposed via light splash from a wet brush to their upper back. Indicates four when presented with universal pain scale as well as itching and heat. Deeper dermal necrosis than previous tests. Skin areas exposed to greater than 1 minimum per centimeter cubed produce iterations of 2. Single iteration produced, uh, introduced to 250 milliliters of fresh water produced 0.5 centimeter iteration of 3. 1 milliliter of 1 collected over 3 hours. Sample contained all iterations terminated by salinization. Test 11. D-class personnel exposed to 1 via wet sponge to subject's foot indicated 8 when presented with universal pain scale. 11 centimeter long triangular iteration of 2. Emergence resulting in severe subject injury. Iteration introduced to 750 milliliters of fresh water produced 9 centimeter iteration of 3. 25 milliliters of 1 collected over 1 hour. Sample contained all iterations terminated by salinization. Uh, test 100. Exposed via drinking glass to their digestive system. Indic refused to indicate when presented with a universal pain scale. 1 meter long tubular iteration of 2. Emergence resulted in subject casualty. Iteration introduced to 100 liters of fresh water produced just under 1 meter iteration of 3. 500 milliliters of 1 collected over an hour. Sample contained all iterations destroyed. Test 101 was expunged. Test uh, 110 exposed via submersion of subject's arm. They lost consciousness before being presented with a universal pain scale. 0.5 meter arm shaped iteration of, of 2. Emergence resultant in subject injury. Iteration introduced to 250 liters of fresh water produced 7 iterations of 3. 10 liters of 1 collected over 3.5 hours. Sample contained. Everybody's destroyed. D111. They were exposed via submersion. Subject not presented with universal pain scale. Single iteration of 2. Data expunged. When exposure testing temporarily suspended, electromagnetic properties testing will continue as normal per 05 blank. So whatever happened when they put a whole person in there, they're not allowed to do that anymore. Now then, Gaia's blood. Is it something Earth related? It was safe, and then it was Euclid, and now it's Keter. So, special containment procedures amended, revised as of 2000 something. A single sample of Gaia's blood is stored in a triple redundant hermetically sealed container, which is to be stored in an evacuated reinforced containment chamber at site blank. The containment must be checked daily for deterioration. If necessary, the sample must be transferred to a new container via procedure 1100-233-J to prevent any possible vaporization. All direct experimentation on 1100 has been suspended pending further investigation. In the case of wild outbreaks of guys' blood, mass deployments of defoliants and desiccants must be enacted within a 1 km radius from all infected areas and a 12-month quarantine established to monitor for additional outbreaks. The use of nuclear or chemical weapons to establish a public diversion may be authorized by at least three level four personnel. Archive special containment procedures amended. Archive special containment procedures. So it used to be, samples of 1100 have been moved to the high-risk security biohazard materials storage at Biocontainment Site 26, following the loss of Biocontainment Site 33. Experimentation on 1100 may only be performed with prior Approval from at least two level 3 personnel and must observe all level 4 biohazardous materials handling guidelines. In the case of wild outbreaks of 1100, mass deployments of defoliants and desiccants must be enacted within a 200 meter radius of all infected specimens and a 6 month quarantine established. So I'm going to close that. And it used to before that say, uh, secure biohazardous material storage at site 33, experimentation only with one level 3 personnel pr approval. All level 3 biohazardous 
In the case of outbreaks, defoliants and desiccants within 50 meters and one month quarantine. Description amended. Gaia's blood is a highly dangerous complex organ organic substance that causes anomalous transformations in natural plant and animal life. Despite being composed primarily of heavy proteins and redacted, Gaia's blood will spontaneously vaporize into aerosol form and can be transmitted by direct contact with infected subjects, pollen, dander, and other excretions. This sounds like Mr. Gray from Dreamcatcher so far. Infected plant and animal subjects will transform over the course of 24 hours, which includes, but is not limited to, plants with bulbous sections or large fruit undergo exotic chemical transformations and become filled with explosive or caustic substances that burst violently from the affected section when disturbed by humans. Plants with long tendrils or vines gain muscle-like st internal structures that allow them to grasp and crush living human prey. Plants with thorns or needles harden to the point that, of being able to cause serious bodily injury and, in some cases, become coated in substances that are highly toxic to human physiology. Plants that are generally used as human food sources become hardened or otherwise change composition to be inedible, and just indigestible, or otherwise dangerous for human consumption. Animals normally considered docile prey animals become increasingly strong and aggressive and will attempt to harm human subjects with no regard for personal safety. Animals that are natural predators will prioritize human targets as prey, ignoring easier targets. Animals that are domesticated livestock undergo physiological changes that render their flesh impossible to digest or even lethally poisonous when consumed by humans. Animals that are household pets become feral and hostile to human handlers, oftentimes increasing in size and strength sufficient to cause bodily harm. Gaia's blood has become increasingly dangerous to contain and its effects have increased in magnitude since its initial containment in 1989. No conclusive source has been yet determined for Gaia's blood, nor is it known how or why it specifically targets human subjects. Current speculation points to a radical environmentalist group with access to Foundation-grade resources and technology. As such, worldwide Foundation assets have been directed to monitor radical environmentalist groups for possible evidence that may lead us to discovery of Gaia's blood's manufacturer. All experimentation with it has been halted due to the extreme danger and continual adaptation. I'm not going to bother reading the archive descriptions because... Yeah. Classify at level 4 by order of O5 command, eyes only. Addendum 23, incident log addendum regarding loss of biocontainment site 26. From fragments of damaged surveillance video recovered from the remains of biocontainment site 26, it has been determined that the incident resulting in the total loss of... Site 26 was instigated by doctors Blank and Blank. The video evidence shows that on Blank Blank 2000 something at uh, 0631L, Dr. Blank disarmed and shot the armed guard posted at Site SCP 1100 containment, after which Dr. Blank proceeded to breach containment and remove the sample. Access laws recovered from the environmental systems then reported a breach in the primary service hub at 637 at which point 1100 was presumably introduced into the entire site's air and water supply. Investigation has turned up evidence of environmentalist organization membership for both Dr. Blank and Blank. All personnel outside Blank are being screened immediately as well. Dire entry recovered from the home of Dr. Blank. Got a chance to talk with Blank again today. He agrees with me now that there is no other explanation that fits. When you have eliminated all possibilities, then whatever is left has to be the truth no matter how insane it is. 1100 isn't an engineered substance, it's not some bunch of hippies getting their sick revenge on civilization. It's a planetary immune response. It's Gaia, Mother Earth, fighting back against us. The more we try to fight it, the worse it gets. She wants us all dead, wants us gone because of what we've done to her. And there's nothing we can do to stop it. The only thing we can do is take responsibility for our sins and accept our punishment. Tomorrow we're initiating the plan. Okay, it's exactly what I thought it was. I was going to say that it's probably just... The Earth being like, hey, humanity keeps ruining the planet. I'm going to ruin humanity with everything the planet's got. So, SCP-1000 was Bigfoot. SCP-1100 is the Earth itself, basically. Interesting. There's no telling where the 1100s are going to go from here. But so far, next episode, we got an interesting topic. The Blue Ridge Phenomenon, Dr. Wondertainment's Young Surgeon Sam Transplant Kit, nose crab and neural polypore half those things sound terrifying in any case this has been a notchy this is episode 200 and something of let's read the sp foundation wiki if you liked it a like this subscribe will be groovy if you didn't you need to do either one of those things 
If you'd want to click the bell, you can do that as well. Then you'll get notified when I upload more things. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Later.